In this video, I'm going to show you the components you need and a wiring diagram that will help you build your very own Herm system. And that's coming up next. Welcome to Short Circuit of Brewers. Our channel is all about electric brewing. We do product reviews, brew days, and how-to instructional videos just like this one. If you just stumbled upon this video and you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing, ring the bell to make sure you're notified for more content, and hit the thumbs up and give us a like if you like this video. In the previous part of this series, we've been running through all of the different types of electric brewing, from brew in a bag to rims, and now finally the Herm system. Before we get started with the parts you're gonna need in the diagram, I just wanted to kind of quickly cover something that we haven't covered in the previous videos, and that is enclosure size, or the size of the box or metal enclosure that you're going to put your components in for your electric brewing system. Most of the previous builds were pretty small as far as components go. This build is probably the most complex. The only thing I can think of more complex than this is where you have some automation with the touch screens or screens on the panel itself. But one thing that I wanted to talk about is the size of the panel. Now my panel is 16 by 12 by six, and it is a Herms panel, but I will tell you that if I had wanted to have a disconnect for the power cord, I would have had a very hard time building it in that panel because of the fact that there's not really a place for me to be able to put the connector for the cord. Now I plumbed mine straight in and have a pigtail off that plugs into the wall, but that is just something that you wanna consider whenever you build your panel. Now the panel that I have spec'd out in this system in the parts list, which that will be available on our website, uh, you can just click on the link down below in the description to get a uh, downloadable PDF of the parts list. That panel is basically the same panel that I have. For whatever reason, Auber does not have panels that have the three DIN holes cut out in them. So that's gonna be something that you're gonna have to do with that panel, but that panel is still available just without the three holes in it. One of the other things to consider also is the depth of the panel or how deep it is. The PIDs that we're figuring to use, which is the DSPR120 and the SYL2352s, are fairly deep. They are, I think, four and a half inches deep, and that can come into contact with components inside of the panel itself if you're not careful. There's some contactors that we're listing in the build, so you want to be sure that whenever you purchase your components that you have all of the items pretty much specced out and make sure that you're not going to run into any issues whenever you begin to install all of your components in your panel. Not a bad idea to lay out your design on a piece of cardboard. Take a look at that and see if it works. Maybe even put it up on something so you can measure the distance by just setting your PID in a hole that maybe you cut a, cut a hole out with an X-Acto knife or something like that. Just so you can make sure that all your placement is right, because the worst thing in the world is have everything mounted in, start doing all your wiring, and then find out that one of your components is actually hitting when you shut the door. So that's a pitfall to watch out for. One other thing, stay tuned towards the end of the video. I do have an announcement regarding this series. Got some exciting stuff coming up for you, but I wanted to let you guys know about that after we get through with all the rest of the diagram and the components and everything for the system. Again, I wanna preface the build with, I'm not an electrician, always hire an electrician. If you're working with electrical, any type of power circuits, they always need to be on a GFCI circuit. I, I can't express that enough. You know, beer's not worth dying over. So make sure if you're gonna do an electric brewing system that you do have it protected for yourself. Let's take a look at what's inside of the control panel from a component standpoint. You're going to need four fuses, and that is to protect your pumps and your PIDs. You have one main power key switch. You need three PBC 302 120 volt contactors, and that is to switch your elements on and off. You'll also need two SW16s or two SW11s. You'll need five indicator lamps, and three of those are going to be 120 volt, and two of them will be 240 volts. You need two NEMA L515s for the pumps, and those are twist lock units. You need one SW3 and one additional switch block for the interconnect. You need two SYL2352 PIDs, and uh, I covered the PID tuning and setup in the PID episode. You'll need two NTP 
RTD probes. Two of those probes are mounted in T's, and then you need one weldless RTD probe for your kettle. I would suggest buying the XLR and the braided cables for those just to make them more durable. You need two 40 amp SSRs. You need two L6 NEMA 30 amp twist lock plugs for the HLT and the boil elements, and one DSPR120. The other thing I wanted to cover is I really appreciate Doug from Homebrew Talk doing all these wiring diagrams for me. It's been awesome to have somebody do that. I really appreciate it. I can't say thank you enough. So if, if you guys get over to Homebrew Talk, just tell him thanks for me if you would. Okay, so let's take a look at the diagram. In the Herms diagram, once the power is supplied, it begins to flow through the system. In this diagram, Doug incorporated an interlock circuit to avoid dry firing of the elements or the pumps. To exaggerate that design element, I'm showing all the pump switches and the element power switches in the on position and we'll be shutting them off one at a time to show the flow through the interlock circuit. After the first pump is turned off, it continues to the interlock circuit on pump two. Once that switch is turned off, the power will continue to flow to the three-way element power switch. If it's on in either direction, the circuit will not flow through that switch, preventing dry firing, etc. Once the element power switch is turned to the off position, the circuit will then flow to the main power key switch and allow the entire system to be energized with power. Once the main key switch is turned on, it energizes the rest of the components and the interconnect makes a continuous connection to allow the system to remain powered on until the main power switch is turned off. Now, when the PIDs receive power, they automatically start reading their corresponding temperature probes and depending on what the previous setting was, they will begin to send signals to the corresponding solid state relays. Because the elements are switch controlled, the SSRs can receive a signal to fire, but will not have power until the element switch is turned on. Now to simulate a brew day in the diagram, you will fill your HLT and mash tun with water and turn on your circulation pump to the HLT. You would then turn the three-way selector switch to the HLT element, and based on the setting of the PID, the element will begin to heat the water in the hot liquor tank to the set temperature. While mashing, you'll turn your mash pump on to recirculate your wart through the Herms coil until your mash is complete. Once your sparge is near completion, you'll turn off the HLT element prior to the element being exposed to prevent any dry firing. Complete your sparge, filling the boil kettle to volume. You would then turn the selector switch to the boil kettle element on position, and the contactor will make the circuit complete to the element, and your boil kettle element will begin to heat your wart based on that PID setting. And that pretty much sums up the components you're going to need for the Herm system, as well as a brief description of how the diagram works. Now, there are more complicated systems you can do with alarms and buzzers and timers. I wanted to try to keep it simple still because of the fact that, you know, some people may not want all of those additional items. If you do, obviously there's more research you can do, but this gives you kind of a baseline of exactly what you're going to need to build your own Herms panel. I didn't include a lot of wiring in there or connectors in the parts list. That's something that you can research out yourself as far as how many connectors you need, what size you need, what size of wire. There is wiring sizes specified on the actual diagram itself. So if you want to download that, you can do that. Also, there is a wiring video that I did that kind of shows you how to do wiring for connectors, different sizes of wire, how to strip the wire, multiple things like that. So if you want to do that, check that out. This has been a wonderful journey through all of the different types of electric brewing systems. We're going to continue on the journey with doing some other things. Some people asked if we could take a look at putting the system that you built into Beersmith or how to calculate all of the different volumes. I'm going to be bringing that video to you sometime soon. As promised, and you may have noticed me holding a PID in an earlier video, I have gotten my hands on some components and we'll begin doing the wiring video series very soon. So, Mike is actually wanting to do a small rim system. He's got this crazy, I don't know, Herms tube, I guess you would call it. I'll show you a picture of it sometime in the near future, but we're going to start building the panel for that for him, and that'll be kind of a rims Herms hybrid type system. But I wanted to bring the wiring video to you guys, and it looks like it's going to happen, so that's awesome. I want to let you know also that uh, we are an affiliate for Brew Hardware, so if you use our parts list, we do get a little bit of money from that, and that kind of helps bring content to the channel. You know, all these things take money. I don't mind taking my time and making these things for you guys, but with uh, buying components and some of the other things, it does take some money. So we certainly appreciate your support with that. I want to do something with Auburn. I've been working with them to try to come up with some new designs for panels. 
and bring a wiring video specific to one of their DIY kits. They're kind of in the midst of redesigning some DIY kits right now. I am an Amazon affiliate and they do sell stuff on Amazon, but I just, I can't in good conscience ask you guys to buy from the Amazon site because of the fact that it is more expensive than on their website. And I just, I'm all about trying to do something as good as possible, but also be as cost conscious as possible. So I really can't ask you guys to spend more money just so I can make a little bit of money on it. I'd rather have you guys go to Auburn and buy the stuff at their normal price and get your deal, the best deal you can there. One thing that I have done on our website where all the parts lists are, I did put a donate button over there for PayPal. If you guys find this content valuable, I know some people had talked about, you know, they would do Patreon or whatever. I really didn't want to do anything to charge people, but if you guys are kind enough and you want to donate some money to us, there is a button over there on that page for you to be able to do that. Again, I really appreciate all the support we've had, all the, you know, great feedback we've had. I really appreciate all the subscribers, all the thumbs up we've gotten. Um, you know, there's going to be more content coming. I heard from my person at uh, Blickman. I should be getting the Riptide pump in soon, sometime around April, and I'll be doing a full review on that, as well as a side-by-side-by-side -side -by -side comparison. I've got a March pump, and I've also got a Chugger pump. So taking the Riptide and comparing it with all three of those should be a awesome. I mean, I'm, I'm excited to, to see what the outcome is on that. So until next time, please consider subscribing. Hit the bell to be notified for more content. This has been Brian for Short Circuit of Brewers. Really appreciate your support. We'll see you on the next one.